Hi 213, talking about uh, congruence and uh, constructions and similarity. So in 12.1 we're going to talk about a variety of topics as you can see and actually they continue on to a second slide. If you'd like to read all of them, pause the video while you read through the summaries of the things we're going to be talking about. Uh, but the first thing we're going to work with is congruence and similarity. So this is actually an example of what's called a tessellation. It's pretty uh, pretty cool. You may have seen these before. Uh, these, the idea here is that there are congruent fish and the congruent birds, right? And I use the words congruent because we've used this with our geometry in the last chapter and we're going to continue to use this word here. Uh, congruent, remember, just means that they have the same shape and the same size, right? So they're exactly the same. Not just the same shape, but also the same size. Uh, in, in a sort of contrasting way, over here we we see that we have what are called similar triangles. There is this triangle here, which is similar to the large triangle here. It's the same shape, but it's not necessarily the same size, right? So this small triangle right here is similar to the large triangle. Same shape, not the same size, versus congruency, which says same shape and same size. Okay, so in general we say similar objects, with, and we use this little squiggle here, this tilde thing here. They have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. Versus congruent objects, which we remember we use this notation for congruency. Yes, we've used this before. They have the same shape and the same size. Congruent objects are similar. Make sure you understand that. If it's congruent, then they're similar, right? Because they have the same shape. Similar objects are not necessarily congruent because similar objects have the same shape, but they don't necessarily have the same size, right? So congruency implies similarity, but similarity does not imply congruency, right? That's a good true-false question, right? Uh, so make sure you sort of get that down down uh, firmly into, in your mind in terms of congruency and similarity. We've seen the notation used before, and I talked to you about this in class, where we see that we have uh, a line segment AB is congruent to CD if and only if AB equals CD. And what this means is the lengths are the same, right? Um, if we use the notation for angles instead, we say an angle ABC is congruent to an angle DEF if and only if the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle DEF. Remember I talked to you about how uh, you can't use angle equals angle or you, and you can't use measure angle congruent measure angle, right? You have to use the congruency to talk about the angles being congruent, and you have to use the equals to talk about the measures being equal, right? Same thing here, you say line segment is congruent to line segment if and only if measure of line segment equals measure of uh, line segment. Sorry about the little email pop up there. Okay, so now we can start doing what are called Euclidean constructions. So this is when we start thinking about these um, geometric ideas of um, our basic constructing things like points and lines, and, and if you could do this with planes, but we won't. Uh, you start taking these basic, con these basic starting points and you start talking about what you can construct with those beginning points, right? With those beginning elements. Okay, so the first thing is that if we have two points, we can construct a unique straight line through them, right? And this unique straight line can be drawn containing the points as well as a unique segment connecting the points, right? This is accomplished by uh, you just line up a ruler and connect through the two dots, right? You can connect a line segment through them or you can connect a line, right? This just means connect the dots, really. It's, it is possible to extend any part of a line. So if you have a line and you can continue to extend it on and on and on into infinity. <clears throat> a circle can be drawn if you know its center and you know its radius, and we'll do that in a second. Any number of points can be chosen on a given line, segment, or circle. Points of intersection of two lines, two circles, or a line and a circle can be used to construct segments of lines or circles. No other instrument, such as a marked ruler, triangle, or protractor, or procedures can be used to perform Euclidean uh, constructions. So, if you're wondering what this last one really means, it just means that uh, we shouldn't be trying to recreate line segments by measuring them with a ruler, or we shouldn't be trying to create an angle by using a protractor, right? We're just going to use a straight edge, which is not a ruler, it's just a straight piece of plastic or wood or whatever, it doesn't have markings on it, and we're not going to use a protractor. If we want to recreate an angle, we're going to have to use a compass and or a straight edge, right? And we'll talk about a compass and show you a compass construction in just a second. 
Okay, and actually let's do it now. So let's construct a circle if we know its center and its radius. Okay, so if we know where we want to center a circle and we know its radius, then we can construct a circle from that information. So what we do is we set the legs of the compass, these are the legs of the compass here, right, to measure PQ, to measure the radius. We then set the pointer at the center of the circle and swing it around, right? And actually what's great about our textbook is that we have a lot of different media that we can make use of and one thing that we have on our website is videos. Not too difficult, I think, and I think we've all worked with constructing circles with a compass before. We're going to get more practice doing some exam examples in class uh, when we're working together. Uh, but let's now move on to another construction. So there are a lot of ways to draw a segment congruent to another segment. You could use a ruler, but remember, to do these Euclidean constructions, we're not going to do that, right? We're going to try to use the method shown here, which is using a straight edge and a compass. So instead of reading through it, let's just watch another video. You're welcome to read through it if you like. Pause the video and watch it, or uh, pause the video and read it or watch what we have here, which is a video demonstration. Great, for right now we're going to stop there for this video and then we'll pick up in our next video.